On 20th November 1985, Microsoft opened doors for all those who could afford a computer with the release of its first independent version of Microsoft Windows, version 1. Needless to say, this operating system lacked a degree of functionality and achieved little popularity. Windows 1 was not a complete operating system, but rather an operating environment that extended MS-DOS. And like everything, DOS was inherent with flaws. A decade after Windows operating system was born, a code-named operating system, Chicago, was released in 1995 as Windows 95. This new consumer-oriented version of Windows 3.11 was designed to have support for 32-bit preemptive multitasking for the first time. In 2001, Microsoft introduced Windows XP, codenamed Whistler, what would be Microsoft's most popular operating system ever. The initial release met with considerable criticism, particularly in the area of security, leading to the release of three major service packs. Windows XP was the current edition longer than any other version of Windows, from 2001 all the way to 2007, when Windows Vista was released. Windows Vista, Microsoft's blue-eyed operating system, intended to have enhanced security by introducing a new restricted user mode called User Account Control, replacing the administrator by default philosophy of Windows XP. And this also meant zillions of annoying notifications and permission pop-up windows. Vista also featured new graphic features, the completely spanking new Aero graphic interface, tons of new applications and a large number of underlying architectural changes. And in less than two years after Vista opened new windows for mobile and desktop computing, Microsoft is trying to up the bar with Windows 7 Ultimate. Let me try my hand at an analogy. If operating systems were SUVs, then XP would be like a Mahindra Bolero. Simple, reliable and sturdy. But you wouldn't want to drive into a state banquet sitting in it. Then there is Vista, the Scorpio of the operating systems. Eye candy, complete new architecture, sturdier, but extremely resource hungry. Looks brilliant, but not so practical. Now in 2009, Windows 7 Beta comes along like an attempt to make up for the damage of the perception caused by Vista, resulting in something like the brand new Mahindra Xylo. Adequately stylish, enough power to satiate the petrol heads, or geeks in this case. Analogies aside, I have test driven Windows 7 Beta and let me tell you what's new. Well, first and foremost, installing the beta OS is a breeze. And once you're on the home screen, it looks bloody impressive. The new home page is a sure shot lesson in clean and user-friendly interface. You'll see a lot of arrow-like glassy design cues. The biggest change here is the taskbar. The new taskbar now functions somewhat like the Mac OS X's dock. Large application icons on the taskbar launch programs when clicked on. You can customize which application sits there. In addition, you can move your cursor on these icons to get a full screen preview of what the window will look like when maximized. The new taskbar layout and the functionality it brings definitely is one of the coolest things that we have seen in Windows 7 and something that will enrich your everyday usage. Now, Vista got flack for the zillion pop-ups that prompted your immediate attention. This problem has been solved in Windows 7 with the help of two features. First up, you can adjust the security level of your PC to four different levels, which directly affects the number of information windows that pop up. The other feature that acts like a friendly concierge is the Action Center. Now, Windows 7 Action Center is a one-stop place where you can find system maintenance information, security information and also troubleshoot computer problems, if any. Nobody likes to wait and looks like Microsoft has responded to that sentiment with Windows 7. The beta version of this OS definitely is snappier than Vista at its peak. If you thought it would take a whole day to set up your home network with the help of Windows 7's new home group function, one can set up a home network within minutes. 
So sharing all the multimedia across your Xbox, desktop, Windows mobile phone and laptop just became a hell lot easier. Now we'll give you a separate do it yourself on that in the coming weeks. Windows 7 adds another dimension of function to the PC. For the first time ever, Windows will support multi-touch. And that is great news for partners like HP who can now make the most of their touch smart PC with the help of multi-touch. Be prepared for multi-touch laptops to hit the stores very soon. Now is the time for my final verdict on the beta version of Windows 7. It is definitely one of the most awaited and definitely a nice upgrade to Vista. And if you've not hit the download button for this beta OS already, you're simply wasting time.